Well, hi there. This is a Komodo dragon. And this is a tegu, which is not very closely related to Komodo dragons at all. But this is. And so is this. And so is this. Heck, even this is pretty closely related to the Komodo dragon. They are all members of the clade Anguimorpha, which includes the Komodo dragon and its closest relatives. And just for the record, even chameleons and snakes are more closely related to monitor lizards than Gus Gus here. But I would say that more people identify him as being a Komodo dragon than what he actually is. I tag you. But we'll get to them another day. In fact, I have a very exciting announcement about that that I will get to a bit later in this video. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge. It turns out that arthropods aren't the only things that have a hard, durable exterior to protect what is really valuable within. It's also the Ridge wallet. Without spending a dollar, you can earn a free entry just by visiting their website, ridge.com, and click enter now for the chance to win the Hennessy Velociraptor Ford Bronco, which is the coolest Ford Bronco I've ever seen. And all of these Ford Broncos are stinking rad. Or if you're not so into unbelievably, ridiculously amazing cars, how's $75,000 in cash sound to you? If you're into that kind of thing. But I should mention that in addition to your one free entry, you can get an additional entry for every dollar you spend on the site, ridge.com, and custom Hennessy products like this Hennessy Ridge wallet or this Hennessy key case, they're gonna come with an extra, well, as much as a thousand entries. And because they're so durable, Ridge gives each of their products a lifetime warranty. If you use my link, ridge.com slash Clint, you'll receive an additional 10 bonus entries. And by entering my code, Clint, during checkout, you'll also enjoy 10% off. This sweepstakes is coming to an end extremely soon. If you're thinking about getting a Ridge product or you just want to make sure you're entered into the sweepstakes, now is the time to do it. Right now, I want to talk about the Anguimorpha and all of the incredibly strange and amazing members thereof. And let's start with the Komodo dragon. This is the largest lizard that isn't a snake on the planet today. And they are part of the family Varanidae, excluding the snakes, which as I just hinted, are just as much lizards as are the members of the Anguimorpha. The Varanids are only in competition with the skinks for being my favorite group of lizards. And I definitely like the Anguimorpha more than I like the Skinkiformata, which probably has something to do with why the Anguimorpha gets its own video. This is such an awesome group of lizards. The Varanids are often referred to as monitor lizards, though in Australia they're often called goannas. Goanna is actually a mispronunciation of iguana, which Varanids are not, though they are more closely related to iguanas than they are to tegus. But they're not iguanas, and everything in this entire video is more closely related to them than they are to iguanas. They're just big lizards, and while iguanas tend to be herbivores, most varanids are carnivores, except for three species in the Philippines that eat mostly fruit. If you want me to go to the Philippines to look for these veggie monitors, please consider supporting us on Patreon. If you'd like to come with me, then definitely consider supporting us on Patreon. Unlike iguanas and tegus, monitor lizards are found in Africa, Asia, and Oceania which is Australia and all of the islands in its general vicinity. This includes Komodo, home to the Komodo dragon, the aforementioned largest lizard that isn't a snake that is currently alive. I stress currently because there's good evidence that mosasaurs that we discussed last Dinosaur December are not only not dinosaurs, but lizards. And not only lizards, but members of the Anguimorpha. And some of them got over 50 feet long. Komodo dragons are less than a fifth that long. A mosasaur could swallow a Komodo dragon like a Komodo dragon could swallow an Aki monitor. And that isn't even the largest monitor lizard of all time. The largest known monitor was the Megalania of Australia. They got to 15 feet, maybe over 20 feet long. And it was still there 50,000 years ago. The first people in Australia may have seen them, perhaps even contributed to their extinction. 
Australia is also home to the smallest of all known monitors, the Dampier Peninsula Monitor, that is only 23 centimeters long. So they're not all huge. If you'd like to see me look for these guys too, well, you know what to do. So Varanids might be the most varied of all lizard families in terms of size, but not really in terms of body plan. Though some are more arboreal, others semi-aquatic, some eat fruit, others eat water buffalo, their basic body plan is astoundingly similar. They can be recognized by their forked tongues and the use of their necks in breathing. This ability to push air into their lungs allows monitors to breathe while on the move, an ability that most lizards lack. And that is just the beginning of the amazing ways that monitors obtain and distribute oxygen. They have a heart with a septum that keeps their pulmonary and systemic loops separate, almost like a four-chambered heart found in crocodilians, birds, and mammals. But that long neck, positive pressure breathing with a generally rather sharp face and forked tongue will generally allow you to identify a monitor lizard. You definitely will not confuse them with their closest living relatives, the earless monitors, which are not monitors. They are the only living members of the family Lanthanotidae which are one of the main reasons that I want to go to Borneo. You know what to do. But that is the only place on Earth where they're found. And despite being the closest living relatives of the Varanids and being called earless monitors, you are very unlikely to mistake them for monitors. In fact, morphologically, they more closely resemble the beaded lizards and Gila monsters of the family Helodermatidae. So much so that before molecular phylogenetics, they were sometimes classified as part of the Helodermatidae, which is also part of the Inguiomorpha, so stay tuned. That said, you are unlikely to mistake them for beaded lizards, despite the similarity in head shape and somewhat beaded appearance. For one thing, they're in Borneo, not North or Central America. They are brown in color with longer necks, more like the neck of a monitor. They're proportionally just longer in general, almost like you took a tiny brown beaded lizard, grabbed it by the head and tail, and stretched it out like Stretch Armstrong. Add to that that the beads on their back form uniform rows. They really remind me of dragon snakes. And, like snakes, their ears are covered. They have no external ear openings, hence the common name. They also have beautiful blue eyes, unlike the dark eyes of beaded lizards. And you're likely to find them in or around water. And they're generally smaller than beaded lizards, maxing out around 16 inches, though larger individuals have been observed. Honestly, if you're going to confuse an earless monitor with anything, which you probably won't, I guess it would be with their next closest relatives, the crocodile lizards of the family Shinosauridae. Crocodile lizards, like earless monitors, are brown, semi-aquatic, with bumps all down their backs. They're also just about the exact same size. And while they're not from Borneo, China and Vietnam are at least closer to Borneo than Guatemala is. But that isn't the only reason that you're not going to confuse the two. Ignoring for a second that their heads are completely different in shape, crocodile lizards usually have alternating light and dark bands. Their back bumps are not arranged into lines, as with earless monitors. They look more like crocodiles. Who would have guessed? And their bellies tend to be reddish. And now we can talk about their short, tall heads and dark eyes that are nothing like the long, flat heads and blue eyes of earless monitors. Though it is a bit hard to use ears to distinguish them. It's hard to see the ears on crocodile lizards. And they're both mildly venomous, as are many monitors. Arguably all of them. But they aren't the most famously venomous of all the members of the Anguiomorpha. Because the most famously venomous of all lizards are also in this group though they're in the other major clade of the Anguiomorpha. Anguiomorpha means snake or dragon form. And the three families we've discussed so far comprise the Paleoanguiomorpha, or the old snake or dragon form lizards. The remaining five families all fall into the Neoanguiomorpha, or the new snake or dragon form lizards. All of these five remaining families are more related to one another than they are to any of the old snake form lizards. And the old snake form lizards are all more closely related to one another than they are to any of the new snake form lizards. In fact, all of the new snake form lizards are equally related to the Komodo dragon, as well as the other monitors, the earless monitors, and the crocodile lizards. So they are, as a group, the next most closely related lizards to Komodo dragons. And let's start with the family for which the entire clade, Anguiomorpha, is named. The Anguidae the alligator or glass lizards. I freaking 
love this group. And I know I say that a lot, but look at these guys. There is a lot of convergence with the skinks, another group that you know I adore, especially the reduced or absent legs. And one of the two subfamilies, the Anguinae, are legless, so they could be mistaken for snakes, hence the name. My Skeltopusics are proud members of this subfamily, and people mistake them for snakes all the time. Even when I tell them that they're not snakes, they generally want me to explain why not, and I'm very happy to do so. They aren't. They have almost none of the defining features of snakes, but they do have all of the defining features of the Anguidae, including osteoderms and a lateral fold, among other less conspicuous features. The bony osteoderms under the skin give them an armored feeling, as it's armor. These feel nothing like snakes or skinks. And that lateral fold allows the body to expand when they eat or breathe, which is difficult if you are armored. These guys are found all over the Northern Hemisphere, and they probably need more representation here in Clint's Reptile Room. However, if you find a similar lizard in California or Baja California, then you might need to look a bit closer, because it could be one of their closest relatives, the family Anielidae, known as the American Legless Lizards. I don't love this name, though, because there are other American legless lizards. These seem to be totally restricted to places with California in their names. So I would call these California legless lizards. Though there are other legless lizards in California, such as, well, snakes. And like snakes, their ears seem to be covered. But unlike snakes, they blink. They also lack most of the other snake features. To differentiate them from glass lizards, note the lack of a lateral fold, as well as the osteoderms. It is my understanding that they are very soft to the touch, though I've never touched one myself. Maybe I need to herp California, possibly with Brian Cusco. If you'd like to see that happen, you know what to do. But other things that you can look for to distinguish them from glass lizards are their blunt tails, and while glass lizards have somewhat intense faces, these guys have some serious derp. At least that's what they call it in the literature. But isn't that a derpy face? I love it! I want to see one. Brian, can you help me find these? And may I suggest that maybe instead of just calling them California legless lizards, we call them California derp-faced lizards? Because, I mean, look at that face. Now, I have to say that this next family just put the Anguiomorpha over the top in my book. These were long thought to be part of the Anguidae, but molecular analysis revealed that they are not as closely related to the Anguids as they are to, to the Anielids. So, they clearly were not. They're part of their own group, the family Diploglossidae, more commonly known as galley wasps. I honestly have only known about these guys for a few years, possibly because they were just swallowed up among the Anguids. But since the very first time I saw a picture of one, I have been in love with galley wasps. And they're almost all found in Hispaniola, aka Haiti in the Dominican Republic, though there are some species on other Caribbean islands and Central and South America. And they are gorgeous. Most look like skinks, and one is legless, like most snakes, but it isn't the same one that has no external ear opening, like a snake. Though there is one that has no external ear opening, like snakes. And many of them are very colorful. I don't think that they have lateral folds like alligator lizards. They really do look like skinks. And some of them get pretty big, like almost as big as blue tongues. But again, they're not skinks. They're more closely related to Komodo dragons than they are to skinks. In fact, of all lizards, including snakes and amphisbanids, only the debamid lizards and the geckos are less closely related to galley wasps than are skinks. And those guys are basically the hagfish of lizards. But if you had doubts about the Anguimorpha being the coolest group of non-snake lizards because it doesn't include skinks, well, it has the next best thing, and Komodo dragons. And two more families that are absolutely incredible. But before we get there, I want to tell you my exciting news. I have been loving making these phylogeny videos. I love it. And it has made me so happy that you guys seem to be enjoying them as well. We have already discussed every single family of gecko. At the end of this video, all the Anguimorpha, as well as all of the snakes. That is a large percentage of all of the lizards. Heck, it's a large percentage of all of the Lepidosaurs, which are all of the reptiles except for the turtles, which we have covered, the crocodilians, which we have covered, and the birds, which we have only began to cover. And I have decided that in 2024, along with many other phylogenies, 
we are going to finish up the Lepidosaurus and then release a single video, more like a movie really, walking us through the phylogeny of all extant Lepidosaurs. This is one of the biggest undertakings in clinched reptiles history. So thank you so much for your support in this journey, especially to our rad fans and stinking rad fans at Patreon that have allowed us to increase our capabilities so that we could make this happen. We couldn't be doing this without you. If you want to help us create this ultimate guide to every family of Lepidosaur, as well as other projects that might be even bigger still, well, you know what to do. But for now, let's get back to those last two families and what may very well be the coolest clade of non-snake lizards on the entire planet. The three families that we have discussed so far in the Neoinguimorpha are all more closely related to one another than they are to the two remaining families. But their next closest relatives are the family Xenosauridae, the knob-scaled lizards of Mexico. Knob-scaled lizards can easily be identified by that crazy look they generally seem to have in their eyes but also by their round, knob-like scales. Their heads remind me a bit of Abronia alligator lizards, or perhaps of leopard lizards. But those big, knobby scales and that wild look in their often orange eyes definitely sets them apart. Though while we're on the subject of knobby scales, let's talk about the last family in the Inguimorpha. The most distantly related member of the neo Inguimorpha, but the most notoriously venomous lizard in the entire world the family Helodermatidae, the beaded lizards. This family includes what is quite possibly my favorite non-snake lizard native to the United States, the Gila monster, which is kind of the runt of beaded lizards growing no larger than about 22 inches, which is about the low end of the size of the other beaded lizards, some of which get up to around a meter long, perhaps even longer, which is big. But other than Komodo dragon, Gila monster has to be the next most common guess for what Gus Gus is. People are often shocked when I tell them that he could swallow a Gila monster whole. So how do you recognize an actual beaded lizard? Well, if you're in Borneo, it isn't one, especially if it's in the water. But if you are in the Americas, from Guatemala to the United States, and you see a head this shape, there is a very good chance that you have found a beaded lizard. That head is broad, muscular, with large venom glands in the bottom jaw and huge osteoderms all over it. Look at this skull. Look at those teeth. I fear those teeth more than the venom. And honestly, I see little evidence that the venom has ever killed anyone. Nobody has died from a Gila monster bite since 1930, and those that died before that seem to have died from infection because they will chew on you with those teeth. The venom just adds searing pain to grievous mechanical injury. That said, beaded lizards of all types are reclusive and prefer to avoid confrontation with humans. Just don't grab one and you should be fine. The fact that it is black, especially with any yellow or orange, should give it away as a beaded lizard. And just count your blessings that you saw one, take a picture, and don't grab it. And that concludes our tour of the Anguimorpha. What should we cover next? And what are your thoughts about our movie coming out in 2024? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Can we Google uh, the pronunciation? Anguimorpha. Anguimorpha. They're all members of the clade Anguimorpha. <laughs>